Welcome to another SAP TechBytes episode with me, Marius Obert. In this episode, I'll show you how you can leverage the SAP Business Application Studio to determine whether you set up the SAP BTP destinations correctly. This technique can come in handy when you're not sure that you've chosen the right destination properties or whether you set up the SAP Cloud Connector correctly. First, I'll show you how to use the terminal of the SAP Business Application Studio to verify that the destination is accessible and returns data to you. Uh, later, in the second part of the video, I'll show, focus on a more enhanced testing case, where you basically um, build a simple app router that exposes the destination via the cloud connector as a secure web application. And this can come in handy when you want to share the destination with your colleagues. For example, when you develop a local on your local machine, a cup application, and you want to expose that via a secure, secure tunnel to the cloud. Before recording this video, I set up the SAP Cloud Connector in a Docker container on my local machine and connected the two external systems to my BTP trial account. The first one is the well-known ES5 system, which is a upper backend system. And the second one is a cup application that I'm developing on my local machine. You can follow the link in the description to do the same, but actually, any other destination will work as well. So are you ready? Okay, let's get started. Okay, so basically this is the setup as I described it. Here is a chat, uh, cup application that is already running. And here when I refresh the page, you see it returns some sample data. And similarly, here is the ES5 system that I access directly in this case that contains some uh, entities. And here is the cloud connector that, as I said, running on localhost to expose these two systems to SAP BTP. Here we, I have two connections. Let's focus on this one to the APJ trial sub account with two systems. One is the ES5 system with the URL path at SAP OPU O data. And the second one is the Cup application that is running locally. So it also no rocket science here. Uh, that's a virtual host name, virtual port. Uh, it is special because the cloud connector is running from within Docker. So I have to use this Docker host internal to access local host where my cup application is running because that application does not run in the Docker container. I could set it up this way, but I thought this was easier for now. And here, I mean, I can make sure the systems are reachable, that's great. And obviously the cup application is uh, has two services, one is public and this is the only one that I wanna expose via the cloud connector here. Then I go over here to the SAP BTP cockpit. It's a pretty empty sub account. So we see there are two destinations. One is called virtual cup. The other one is called virtual ES5 and both point to the SAP cloud connector with their with the virtual host name and port, as we can see here and here. And um, now this may maybe a situation that you are in. So did you set everything up, but you're not sure, is it working? And how can, can I test if it's working? And for that, I think the easiest option is if you go to the SAP Business Application Studio. Here you see it's a pretty empty uh, workspace that I have here, no projects created so far, but I can already do a right click and select open in terminal to open an empty terminal. And here I can do this simple curl command curl and then I have to enter the name of the destination. So let's say I go to virtual ES5 dot dest. So you have to treat dest for destination as a top level domain. And then I could say for example slash suppliers because here oh, we know that suppliers is an OData entity. So let's go back to the Business Application Studio and execute this. And it takes a second, but that's actually a good thing because it renders so much data. So to have it a little bit easier to inspect the data, uh, let's pipe this to a suppliers.xml file. I mean, we already see it. we don't get an error message, but maybe you wanna uh, inspect the data. So now you see the file has been generated here. I can click on it 
it's obviously all written in one line. You could format it manually, or you could just use a formatter to format the code for us. As it's a very long file, this might take a second or two, but now we see all our entries are here, and we can actually read the data and make sure that the destination is set up correctly and returns the correct data as we expected. Very easy, isn't it? Uh, let's get, uh, go a little bit deeper. Let's create uh, the app router to basically forward all traffic to one of the destinations that are exposed via the SAP Cloud Connector. You could do that maybe because you want to share uh, the data with your colleague. And obviously, that colleague might not have access to the sub account where you set up the destination or to the business application studio. For that, we could uh, use the wizard that is on the welcome screen to start a new project from template. Uh, Let's wait here, select multi-target application and make that a little bit larger here. Click next. And once again, let's call this project SAP Tech Bytes. We see a new workspace will open, which is why the SAP Business Application Studio re-renders because it also adjusts on the left-hand side uh, the, your, the, the structure of your file tree, for example. So here, oh, I already closed it. You see that there is the MTA YAML file and the ignore, so pretty empty so far. Let's do a right click on the MTA YAML, create as an MTA module from template, because here we'll see the option to create an app router configuration. Click start. Here we select a standalone app router. We actually want to add authentication, but we don't want to add a UI. So select yes and no here and confirm with next. And this is now a pretty basic setup that we have, uh, app router with a package.json and app router configuration in the well-known access app.json for the content. It's not a lot, but let me copy it to avoid mistakes. Here we see we changed the authentication method to route because we want to make sure authentication is turned on and all incoming traffic should be sent as is to a destination that is called virtual cup. And if we go back here, we see this is the name virtual cup that points via the SAP cloud connector to my local machine. Besides this, uh, we also have to do a small modification in the MTA YAML because we want to consume uh, destinations and actually also con uh, consume something from the cloud connector. We need a connectivity service as well. So we need a destination service and the connectivity service for this. Let me also copy that over from in here, so we see uh, one destination service, one connectivity service, and both services need a binding to our application router. That's it. That's all the metric that we need to do. Let's build the project. As you can see here, I'm already connected to the Cloud Foundry endpoint. So when the build is done, we can deploy it, the application there. The build completed. Nice. And click deploy. I'll stop the video here and fast forward so you don't need to watch while it's deploying. I guess this might take three to five minutes. Okay, welcome back. As you can see here in the log that uh, deployment finished successfully and here we also see the URL of this app router application. So let me copy that over here in a new tab and access it. And now you will see it will load. And here we basically see the cup application as it is running. So here there, we see there's only one entity, but I can add a books in the end to see all books. Uh, no, to prove you that it's actually, this is actually data running on localhost, I'll uh, kill the cup application here. And when I refresh it, we get an error message because the, the tunnel is still there and the connection is still established, but simply the application is stopped. Now let's turn it back on with npm start. Cup application, as you see here, is starting up. And uh, when I hit refresh now, it was maybe too fast, do it one more time. Here, the books are visible again. So this is a real tunnel from my local machine to 
uh, via SAP BTP to the cloud as a web application. And I also want to show you one more thing. If I open an incognito tab here and I access the same URL, it will ask me whether I want to log in. But if I'm not logged in, I cannot access the data. So this is really like a secure way for uh, this tunnel to share it with your colleagues. You could even on top, for example, gate the route via uh, a scope, for example, to make sure only certain colleagues are able to access this local tunnel or this secure tunnel to a local host. That's it. I hope this way helps you to make sure you can verify your SAP BTP destinations and focus on the important thing, coding. And with that, we are at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you were able to code along, either in your production account or in the free trial account. And by the way, in case you didn't know yet, all sample code, free, uh, all sample code that has been created during SAP Tech Bytes is now available on GitHub in one repository that has one branch per Tech Bytes episode. In case you don't know it, check it out and see you next time. Bye.